hereby introduce and wish to bring to the people of Kenya the president-elect, Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta. Sworn in in an elaborate ceremony in Nairobi, surrounded by 60,000 supporters. Among those on stage was Kenya's top judge. He's the same man who annulled the first of two presidential elections in August because of gross irregularities. Kenyatta responded by calling the Supreme Court a bunch of crooks who he would fix if he won the election rerun in October. And he did win, making for an awkward inauguration. There was also tension outside the stadium and across Nairobi. Less than an hour after Kenyatta's swearing in, those who believed opposition leader Raila Odinga should have won voiced their anger. And that feeling hasn't gone away. Odinga called the inauguration a coronation, suggesting it wasn't legitimate, and has said he'll be president at least in name if that's what Kenyans want. We have said this coming month of December, on the 12th, we shall have a people's assembly that will swear me into office. So Odinga's National Super Alliance Party is rolling ahead with its plans to swear in its leader as president next week, regardless of the cost. It's not only about NASA fraternity, it's about justice of what has been denied unto others. Why kill an innocent person? Why kill an armed person? Why kill for sure? It is so much pathetic. The government that we need to protect us is no longer protecting us. And that national violence is drawing international attention. A private meeting was held on Tuesday between US Representative Donald Yamamoto and Odinga, urging Odinga not to go ahead with his swearing-in ceremony over concerns it will further polarize the country. During that three-day visit, Yamamoto also met members of the Kenyan government to try and talk them around. The UK is also concerned, with the British Minister for Africa saying, I hope all Kenyans will recognize the need for national dialogue and healing. But rather than healing the country, it's feared December 12th could reopen old wounds. After years of being seen as one of Africa's most stable nations, Kenya has experienced a rise in attacks by Al-Shabaab, a major drought and a drop in the economy, which hasn't been helped by the instability of two elections in six months. And with Odinga refusing to back down, few people expect an alternative president will help overcome those challenges. Vanessa Keneally, The Newsmakers. With me here in the studio is Kimani Ichungwa. He is a member of Kenya's parliament with the ruling Jubilee Party. And joining us from Nairobi is Mohamed Nyamwanda. He's a digital communications officer for the opposition National Super Alliance, NASA. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Mohammed, let me begin with you. Why is Raila still going ahead with this on December 12th? Everybody's warning him. Even the U.S. is getting involved now. There's a feeling it will be reckless. There'll be blood on the streets. Why is he doing this? Uh, well, I take on reasons of the fact that there, there may be blood on the street, but we are not the ones uh, shedding blood on the streets. Um, just this morning, we were at the city, city mortuary removing bodies of dead people majority of whom have been felled by bullet wounds, and most of them have been uh, killed by the security forces, or allegedly by the security forces. And there's no NASA rights, as we call ourselves, going around killing anyone. Um, especially in NASA strongholds, it's very peaceful. Members of all communities are coexisting very nicely and very peacefully. Why is Odinga going on with this? It was announced. Um, it's a people-driven process. Uh, we are on a quest for justice. We, went, uh, we won the August 8th election. <coughs> it was stolen from us. Uh, we went to court. We, we got it nullified. Um, the court ordered for a free and fair election, repeat election, to be done. However, that didn't come to pass. We could see. An election doesn't start on election day. It starts 
in leading, the events right. leading to the election, we could see very clearly so that why not have an inauguration? we were being pushed to an event. Certainly, but I mean, you, you respected the Supreme why? Court when they nullified, you re respected the Supreme Court when they nullified the first election, but then you didn't respect them enough when they said the second one was fine and you didn't show up for the second one. So why are you still having an inauguration now when you didn't even show up for that second election? Well, we need to ask ourselves, why didn't we show up for that election? That was, a, it was an, just an event with a predetermined outcome. It was a waste of time. As has been proven, only 30% of the registered voters at best showed up in that election. That leaves 70% of the country disenfranchised, of the registered voters disenfranchised. And even the 30% figure we feel has been inflated because most polling stations right. were right across the country. Even in so-called uh, jubilee strongholds, they had very dismal okay. turnout. Okay. So it was a sham process. Certainly. And we didn't, yes. Okay, let's bring in Kimani. Kimani, essentially, the long and the short of it from NASA, your president has no legitimacy. They feel they pulled out of that second round because they had major problems with that process. <clears throat> and now the president's going ahead. And on top of all of that, as Mohammed says, and Miguna, the last time we had you on the program as well, he went further and said, this is a genocide being committed by the security forces <coughs> against Raila and NASA supporters. You know, Imran, one, uh, the question of legitimacy stems from the constitution and the rule of law. Whether government is legitimate or not stems uh, basically from the constitution. And we did the elections in line with the constitution and in line with the, with the laws of the republic. And that was verified by the Supreme Court. Therefore, the question of legitimacy was answered in court. Mm -hmm. The question as to numbers, what numbers show up for an election. Immediately after that election, there was a by-election in one of the constituencies in NASA strongholds in Kisi. Mm -hmm. And the seat was actually won by a NASA member of parliament with a paltry 18%. The voter turnout was about 31%, 31, 32%, 31.6%, uh, much less than the voter turnout nationally. And there was no boycott in the by-election. Okay. Therefore, in repeat elections, the turnout will definitely be less okay, than that. But, doesn't but, it, but just doesn't to answer it, what, what, okay, what, what uh, Mr. Nyamwada is saying, one, that they will go ahead with the swearing in because they, uh, with, the, with the, what they call their the swearing in of uh, Raila Odinga, uh, because they announced it. You know, it's preposterous, Imran. And I'll tell you, Raila Odinga is simply in love with bloodshed and dead bodies. He is in love with bloodshed and dead bodies for one reason. The only way Raila Odinga ever ascended to high office in our republic to become prime minister in 2007, 2008, was over the blood uh, and uh, bodies of dead Kenyans but in But Kenyatta has the power now, he right? He seeks. Okay, but why, doesn't, seeks, why uh, doesn't Kenyatta hold out the olive branch? He has the power right now, right? You, when it, you were on the program previously, you said Raila should be treated as a criminal. We a have the criminal. Attorney General saying that he should be tried for treason for holding this inauguration. It might be a bad idea, possibly, arguably, but trying him for treason when millions of Kenyans support the man, who really wants bloodshed? Uh, Is I'll it his side you, or your I'll side? I'll tell you this, Imran. Is Raila Odinga who wants bloodshed because in the past he has been rewarded for spilling people's blood, he was rewarded with high office as prime minister. How that was done was by the West coming in to intervene in our national politics and forcing what was then called a grand coalition government. Raila Odinga today expects that the same will happen, that he will cause bloodshed, that Kenyans will die, and the West will come in now and tell us people, dialogue on governance issues and share power. And I want to say, if uh, it is a question of Uhuru Kenyatta extending an olive branch, he has already done that. Uhuru Kenyatta stated in no uncertain terms that one of his top priorities now is to unify the people okay. of Kenya. And unifying the people of Kenya and getting an all-inclusive government doesn't necessarily mean Raila Odinga okay, being so in Mohammed, government. Okay, so Mohammed, they're holding up. Raila Odinga insists that for okay. a, a government to be inclusive, he must be in that government. Okay, so let for me him ask to Mohammed. be in government, there must be bloodshed. Mohammed. Ra Raila is not the one yes. looking for peace. It's Kenyatta, according to Kimani. What do you think? Um, that's a very preposterous statement, uh, at the very least. Um, we've, uh, first of all, I want to thank him for admitting that the turnout in the uh, August 26th events were, uh, was dismal. And uh, it's finally it's good he's admitting. So that shows already he is conceding and admitting that they have a lack of uh, legitimacy. 
and the tyranny of numbers myth that they have always been peddling around that they have numbers. When it was left, the field was left all by themselves, they couldn't feel any... I think it's not answering the question, uh, Imran. Any the question polling on stations. legitimacy, I think I did Yes, and let me get to the... The legitimacy get... question stems from the constitution. Numbers in any repeat election, Yamwada, you do know that. You live in Kenya, you are in Nairobi today, you do know that numbers in a repeat election cannot be as high as the first election. 40% in the repeat election was extremely good and extremely high. It was only less than a million votes, less than what Uhuru Kenyatta okay. got in August. Go ahead, go ahead, Mohammed. That is, that, that's, the opi that's the opinion. 40%, that's after a lot of padding and a lot of inflation. But anyway, back to the question. We want peace. We, we've always wanted peace. We have never killed anyone. Uh, he's, he's talking about that in 2007, we got the prime minister's uh, Raila Odinga got the prime minister's position after blood. If, if he's going to be genuine with himself, members of the community that he's come from, in predominantly... NASA strongholds today, very few of them came into harm's way. The problem was mainly centered around the Rift Valley. And today the Rift Valley is with them. It's no longer part of the matrix as we speak. We want peace. We want justice. All we, we are not asking for a power sharing agreement. We are not asking for a coalition government. We are not asking for a transitional government or any kind. All we want, simple and fair, is a free, fair, credible, verifiable election where everybody is satisfied with the outcome. There are a lot of countries in the world where the presidential elections are very f closely fought and the results is sometimes even less than a okay. million votes. But because the process is transparent, yes. people accept. But this is a totally opaque process. It's a hard sell. 70% of the country feels aggrieved. And we hope that they, ca they come to reason and... Okay. We come to a common so ground, me, and okay, we get this thing Kimani. done again. That's okay. all we're asking. Okay, fair enough. So, Kimani, let me put it to you this way, right? So, 15 million people voted in August. <clears throat> Only 8 million people voted in October. 7 million people didn't vote, and many or most of them were likely to have been Raila Odinga supporters because he boycotted the election. No. That meant? Well, no. okay. That's okay. You disagree with that, but that's a, that's Imran, a, Imran, that's a popular. Just, just, just that's to correct her, because that is the notion that Raila Odinga and his supporters may want. Okay, fair to, enough. The that's what they believe. believe. That's what they believe. But okay, let, remember, let me finish there my are question. also millions of our supporters who did not vote because they were intimi intimidated. Okay, fair enough. You say they intimidated. You put it on the record. Vote. You put it on the record. Yeah. Okay, fine. So you feel they were intimidated. Nevertheless, your candidate went, got 98% of the vote. And I don't mean to be flippant, but like Kim Jong-un doesn't get 98% of the vote in North Korea, right? It was constitutional, undoubtedly. But you've got to lead this country until 2022. It's extremely divided right now. They're not willing to compromise. You're not willing to compromise. How else are you going to get to 2022 without some sort of new elections and an opportunity to go to the ballot box between now and then because that's five years away. I think, Imran, the, the only thing that uh, uh, nobody would ask Kenyans to compromise on is on the question of even going back to elections. On compromising on how to move our country forward, on how to better the lives of our people, that we are more than willing. And even on the question of unity, we are more than willing to compromise and sit down round the table and agree how do we move the country forward. But we should not be seen in any way in a democratic state to be rewarding bad manners. Because there's nothing again, Imran, that stops me in 2022, whoever wins the presidency, me forming my own militia, then claiming a stake in government, we will make it a system, a new system of governance in our country, where all you need to do is wait for an election, the election year, cause violence, and you get rewarded for bad manners. And all that I'm maintaining is that the world and Kenya should not be seen in any way to be rewarding Raila Odinga's bad manners of causing violence, causing bloodshed in our country to get rewarded with high office. If it is a question of unifying Kenyans, President Huru Kenyatta has said it is top of his priorities. How do you unite Kenyans? And I'll tell you the other truth about our country. In my country, it is not the people who are not united. It is politicians like myself and others who incite people against each other. So you admit you guys are the problem? Politicians are problem. And the current, the singular problem today is Raila Odinga and his thirst for raw power. Okay. Uh, Kimani Uchungwa and Mohamed Nyamwanda. I would love to go on, but I'm out of time. I have to move on on the program. I sincerely thank both of you for joining us here on the Newsmakers.